Welcome to this vlog that I am putting together for my mum's birthday, which is actually today, the day that I'm posting it. So happy birthday, mum. I love you. And I had this idea for this vlog probably about a week or so ago, and it's been coming together in my mind ever since. So some of you might already know that I have a bingo board in my reading journal this year. Let me just find that for you. So that's the bingo board I have and it is a reading challenge that I set for myself to read books meeting specific prompts and I did actually ask some of my friends and family members to give me prompts for this and the one my mum gave me was to read an Agatha Christie book and also then for her birthday she asked for a first edition copy of Agatha Christie's By the Pricking of My Thumbs, which I had never heard of, but actually turns out is my mum's favourite Agatha Christie book. So, spoilers, we did, we did get her the, uh, <laughs> the, the first edition book, which hopefully by the time she's watching this, she has already opened, so I'm not spoiling the surprise. I'll make sure that that's the case. And then I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun if I also read that book so I could discuss it with her and then I thought wouldn't it be fun if I read and annotated that book and then gave it to her for her birthday with my annotations which is something that I did for a friend of mine last year and I'm going to do this a little bit differently since this is a murder mystery story at least I presume so I don't actually know anything about this book but it's Agatha Christie so I'm guessing that that's what it is so my annotations are going to be on the specific theme of figuring out who done it and so I'm going to be doing that today and it's a fairly short book I've got the audiobook ready and borrowed from the library ready for me to listen and follow and annotate I just enjoy listening to audiobooks more so I'm still going to do that but I'm going to do immerse and read I feel like that will make it really really nice and I'll be able to annotate it as well as I try to figure it out I am not in any way anticipating that I will be able to figure this out at all I I don't think I will. I'm not very good at sussing those kinds of things out but I think it will just be a bit of fun anyway and hopefully my mum will enjoy reading the annotations and hopefully mum you'll enjoy watching this video as well. I'm not gonna read the back, uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna go in and see see what happens in this book I guess and yes I'll be annotating in pencil because I can't bear the idea of writing in a book in pen. I have 
quickly read through to page 126 so I've read this I don't actually know how many pages this is let me try and check without spoiling myself 289 so I'm nearly halfway through and I've been writing a cast list I don't know if you can see this very well uh, but there's quite a lot of characters I think that that's how Agatha Christie does it and how she gets you and makes sure you can't actually figure it out yourself because there are just so many characters it's impossible to you know it that there's a huge cast of characters it's all very Robert Jordan and I, I think the only I'm sure I must have read more I'm pretty sure I have read more but the only Agatha Christie I can specifically remember reading is Murder on the Orient Express which also has I remember a very large cast of characters. I haven't said so far in this video but I hope, I hope it kind of went without saying this is going to be a spoiler filled vlog <laughs> so I am going to be discussing this book in depth with spoilery details so and the spoilers are going to start from now so if you don't want any of that then bye <laughs> so I, I still don't really know what's going on to be honest so we have Tommy and Prudence otherwise known as Tuppence Beresford and they used to be spies or intelligence agents or whatever and they went to visit Tommy's aunt Ada in a nursing home called Sunny Ridge and there are some interesting characters there and they met a lady named, well, Tuppence met a lady named Mrs Lancaster. Then Aunt Ada unfortunately died and so Tommy and Tuppence went back to the Sunny Ridge home to look at Aunt Ada's things and Mrs Lancaster is gone. She's been taken away by her family but when Tuppence met her the first time she was talking about a child in a fireplace and she also it transpires gifted a picture of a pink house to Aunt Ada and Tuppence recognises the house in the painting so she goes off in search of it and finds it in this little town and this house has been split in half and this couple Alice and Amos Perry live in the back side of the house and there's no one living in the front of the house and they don't know who it belongs to or who used to live there or why it's currently empty and they live just outside of this little village thing and so Tuppence goes to stay there and she's staying at the B&B of Mr and Mrs Copley and Mrs Copley is a bit of a gossip as uh, she knows everything about everyone and she is telling Tuppence all about it and it appears that there is this number a number of years ago there was this string of m disappearances of children and unfortunately some of those children were found murdered or murdered and abused and also the vicar of the local church had received a call asking him to search for the grave of a particular child um, but the name of the child isn't known only the age being seven also when Tuppence went into the front of the pink house which they did to get at a bird that had this is all very complicated but th this is how complicated this book is so whilst she was having tea with Mr and Mrs Perry who live in the back of the pink house they heard a bird fell down the chimney and got stuck in the front of the pink house they go into the front of the pink house with a key that Mr Perry has to rescue this bird and while they're there they find a child's doll in the fireplace this is all very strange I still don't really have a clear idea on what the mystery even is here let alone who done it I I'm kind of keeping up with what's happening but there's so much happening that I couldn't possibly also figure I I already said at the beginning I really don't think I'm going to figure out what happened but in terms of suspicious characters so far I I think 
Miss Packard, who is in charge of the nursing home, is a red herring. I feel like she is construed to be suspicious, but I don't think she actually is. Uh, then we have Miss O'Keefe, who is a particular nurse who looked after Aunt Ada. I, I get wrong vibes from her for some reason. And then there's this family, the Stark family, who are sort of now in charge of this parish that's near the pink house. And Sir Philip is the head of that house currently. And apparently he really likes children, but he doesn't have any of his own children. And his wife left him to move to the south of France, but then she died. And so the local community are a little bit suspicious of him. I think that's also potentially a red herring. But who knows? Who knows? So I'm, as I said, I'm at page 127. I'm going to carry on. How long of these? Whoops. I'm listening at two times speed because the narrator is actually quite fast. And I have just under four hours total. So two hours of listening time left. So I've listened to about an hour and a half so far. So I'm going to continue on. Hopefully I will update you a little bit more regularly now. I feel like I needed this hundred or so pages to actually get settled into what on earth is even happening in this story. Not that I even still really know, but I needed a bit of time to ground myself in the story and I'm going to carry on and I'll let you, I'll let you know when I have anything else to say. If I manage to make any more sense out of anything, I'm not convinced. Right, I'm now on page 188 and Tuppence has found so the vicar was searching for a grave of a child that's missing of a major waters and Tuppence offered to help in the search because the vicar was old and finding it difficult so Tuppence goes to search the final section of graves and she finds one that references Lily Waters, uh, a child. And then Tuppence gets hit over the head and we swap to Tommy's point of view. And of course Tuppence is now missing so Tommy's like, where's my wife gone? And so he starts investigating and he goes back to looking into Mr Eccles, the solicitor of Mrs Lancaster. And he's getting a bad vibe from this Mr Eccles, so he goes to speak to this man he knows, presumably he knows him from when they were spies or intelligence agents or whatever. And turns out Mr Eccles is being investigated for being involved in criminal activity, but they've never been able to find any evidence to attach him to any of these crimes but they have their suspicions because he's just on the periphery and he's also I've just found out tied up with estate agents and Tuppence was going around speaking to various estate agents trying to find out who owns the pink house and wasn't able to find anything out so things are starting to suspiciously link together and also Tommy was contacted by Dr Murray which was Aunt Ada's doctor and the one of the ladies that was living at Sunny Ridge has died uh, from a morphine overdose but there's absolutely no reason why she should have been given morphine and it's making Dr Murray think that maybe some of the other unexplained deaths might be associated. So now we have potential murder of elderly women by morphine at Sunny Ridge. We have a mysterious property. We have a missing Mrs Lancaster. We have a suspicious Mr Eccles and we have a missing Tuppence. What's going on? I don't know. I'm going to move into the other room now because Lee's gone to bed just on the other side of that wall. Um, 
so I don't want to disturb him. Uh, but the sound in the other room isn't as good, so fair warning, the next clips are going to be a little bit on the echoey side, but I am going to move into the other room and then continue. I'm thinking what I'll probably do is maybe film my reaction to the last 50 pages or so because I'm guessing that's where things will come together. I don't really know. It's been so long since I read Nagatha Christie. I don't know if she kind of just does it all in like the last chapter or or what. So anyway. Okay, so I'm now on page 221. So I have like what about 65-ish? 65 65-ish. 65 pages left to go and some things that I'm noticing. So there are a lot of Williams mentioned. So I think there was a cousin named William, there's an uncle named William, the painter of the painting with the pink house is named William. Why are there so many? One of the doctors is Dr. Williams. Why are there so many Williams? That seems suspicious to me. Also uh, we now have Mrs. Moody's first name, Elizabeth Moody, and so she's the one who has been killed. <laughs> um, she's the one who, let me show you him actually, hang on. So she's the one who's been killed and her first name is Elizabeth and they found, um, so Tommy and the butler, sorry that I'm speaking quietly, Lee's asleep, uh, Tommy and the houseman, Albert, have found some secret compartments in one of Aunt Ada's desks. The desk belonged to Uncle William and what else? I, I noted something, hang on. Yeah, so they're, they're searching the desk that was Aunt Ada's, but Aunt Ada didn't originally own the painting. That was owned by Mrs. Lancaster. So are maybe Aunt Ada and Mrs. Lancaster linked or related in some way? And then the other thing is that Mrs. Copley's first name, as mentioned by her husband, is Liz. So now we have a Liz Copley and an Elizabeth Moody who is deceased. We have a home who, we don't know who owns it and we can't track it down and it isn't possible to buy it. We have a dodgy solicitor who is involved in some way with estate agents or house agents, whatever it is they call them in this. And we have a number of Williams floating about for various reasons. We have Tuppence has turned up. She had a concussion, but now she's okay. But she's in a hospital and she was, after, bo after she was boshed over the head, she was just dropped off by the side of the road. The doctors seemed a bit dismissive. So I'm now like, is this the same doctor that we need to be suspicious of from the old lady's home? So I feel like maybe all of this is a cover up, maybe, I don't know, I feel like I'm still missing some pieces but I'm getting really close so I feel like I need to carry on recording but also I feel like my battery is going to die which is not ideal. Um, I feel like I'm really close but I can't, can't quite figure it out. I feel like there's a dead child and some kind of cover up and everybody who gets a little bit too close to the answer is killed. So like the painter and the Mrs. Moody and Aunt Ada and Mrs. Lancaster's gone missing. And also when Tommy took the painting to the wife of the painter, she noticed that a boat had been added to the painting after the fact. So not the, the original painting didn't include this boat on the canal and now there's a boat there. So is that some kind of a code or a clue of some description? Maybe he knew and maybe that's why he's dead. Because he's dead. I don't think I mentioned that, but he's dead too. I feel like I'm getting close, but I'm just not quite there yet. So 
I'm going to carry on and uh, let's see. Oh, we're now into book four. Here is the church and here is the steeple. Open the doors and there are the people. So I feel like this is the part where we're going to get the answers. So hopefully my camera is going to allow me to record this, but I feel like I might need to try and find a way to plug in my wall charger plug. Let me see if I can figure that out. Hang on. Okay, I've managed to set you up plugged into the wall so you won't run out of battery and on my mini tripod on the sofa. So it's not the most flattering of all angles, but at least I should be able to capture my reaction to the end of this book and I'll be able to check in with you. Um, I'm just going to now leave the camera running I think because I've got oh, actually it's quite it's quite I've still got quite a lot left mm. I might not be able to leave the camera running in that case because I've got about 50 minutes of listening time left so maybe I'll read a couple more chapters and then start the camera running because I don't think I'll have enough space on my memory card to do a full 50 minutes of filming. I doubt it. Uh, anyway. The ornament of action as well. She couldn't have come up anywhere near me without talking at the top of her voice as she came. Let me consider this. All right, he said. Okay, so they're back together now, Tommy and Tuppence, and they're discussing the fact that Tuppence was hit over the head and thinking about suspects. They've counted out the vicar because he wouldn't be strong enough and he has heavy breathing so she would have heard him. Potentially Nellie Bly, who is one of the people in the village, she's a bit of a gossip. But she's counting out Mrs Copley. I don't know, I feel like... I think that's a mistake, counting her out. But maybe it's a double bluff, I don't know. Alright, he said. You have good judgement in that kind of thing, Tuppence. Watch out, Mrs Copley. Said Tommy. I don't know. Was there any name painted on the boat? I don't remember seeing one. But then I never looked at it very closely. It's got water living on it. <gasps> very appropriate name for a boat. I know. I have no idea. But she was fine. The boat that was painted into the painting had the name Water Lily on it. Lily Waters. What? This is all very fishy. Ha ha. And Tuppence can't remember why that's relevant. And she was quite positive that her husband didn't paint that book. He could have put it on afterwards. She says not. She was very definite. Of course, because Tuppence. I'm beginning to understand things. Those aren't pebbles, my dear girl. They're diamonds. Number 15. Okay, there are diamonds inside the doll. What on earth is going on? They mentioned a ring earlier that Aunt Ada wore that had a diamond in it. They didn't mention it before because it was such a throwaway reference, but you just never know what's going to be relevant in a book like this, but I do remember that. Uh, hmm. There's going to be a gathering of various relevant people. So the wife of the artist, some local landowners, Nellie Bly, the town gossip, the vicar, and Tommy's friend who's like an, a spy intelligence person. So that's a very Agatha Christie thing to do, isn't it? To have everybody gather and the the answer shall be revealed. So that's obviously, it must be coming up pretty soon now. I'm on page 240, so 48 pages to go, ish. Let's see, let's see. I was just thinking that I'd like to have seen you and Albert discovering secrets. You reasonably believe that house is or was used as one of the hidey holes by a criminal association. 
So Tuppence is just talking about how we don't actually know that the picture belonged to Mrs Lancaster. It was Miss Packard who said that Mrs Lancaster had given it to Aunt Ada, which would make sense because why otherwise would the picture and the desk be connected in any way? And now Tuppence is suspicious of Miss Packard, but I still think that Miss Packard is just too easy. So a bit ago Tuppence was talking about feeling like Amos Perry was suspicious Ooh. and gave her a bad feeling. And now they're talking to Ivor, which is Tommy's spy friend. And he's saying that they have found, I think, other precious gems and things in the pink house. And they don't know who's responsible for it, but they feel like the Perrys must have something to do with it. And they wonder if the criminal element has something over Alice Perry because there was a suspicion that all those years ago all of the child murders that Miss Copley, Mrs Copley was talking about that maybe Amos Perry was responsible for those and so the criminal element might have that over Alice who covered for her husband and so she's involved in that way maybe? I don't know if this is like is this actually the answer or is this still pontification? I'm not sure. It doesn't seem very certain right now. So the people have gathered and Sir Philip Stark, who's like the guy in charge of the parish, kind of, whatever, is there, so is Mrs Boscowen, which is the artist's wife, and she's wondering why they're there. Tuppence is wondering, I mean. Tuppence thinks Mrs Lancaster is dead. I feel like she probably is as well. So now she thinks that Miss Bly is in love with Sir Stark because she used to be his secretary and she's looking at him okay hang on he's talking about his hat sorry <laughs> philip stark is talking about his house having been burnt down but i thought that was the other what are they called the warrenders the warrenders house was supposed to have burnt down I suppose I better check that. Yeah, I've just found the original reference to it. What about the Warrenders? Blah blah blah. Ah, oh, that family's died out by now. They had a, fi a fine property. An old 14th century priory it was burnt down oh, nearly 100 years ago now, so I suppose any Warrenders there were left went away and didn't come back. A new house was built on the site by a rich Victorian called Stark. That was the vicar telling Tuppence. Hmm, suspicious. So, Sir Philip has just mentioned his wife who passed away, Julia, which is the same name that was given of the mother of the, the missing child, Lily Waters, who we now know was a pseudonym for this, this lost treasure thing and the the drawing of the boat was a code to let them know water lily where to find this casket of jewels was where lily waters was buried because lily waters didn't exist but julia was her supposed mother according to major waters who was looking for her and said he didn't know what the child's name would be but possibly would be named after her mother, Julia. We're starting to get close, aren't we? He's an art dealer. He's gotta be wrapped up in this somehow. 
So she's gone to see the vicar to try and get hold of a Bible so that she can check what the rest of the wording on that gravestone meant. And now he's acting suspicious. Or I feel like he is. Mm. And Miss Bly just walked in holding a very heavy metal vase. Probably what she got knocked over the head with. Okay, so now she said that Miss Bly is Mrs Johnson, as in the person who took Mrs Lancaster away, and she's the one that hit Tuppence over the head. But how did we get from A to B? Okay, so it's linking back to something that I did actually circle earlier on. Let me find it, if I can. So she went to see Mrs. Bly just before she was conked over the head, as they're calling it. Uh, and while she was there, she saw a piece of mail that made reference to a Mrs. York at Rose Trellis Court, which is another home for elderly ladies. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. You might have to just trust me. Yeah. There. So she... Oh, fucker. Um, so she's saying now that... York and Lancaster like the striped red and white rose in the Perry's garden. That seems like a bit of a stretch to me. You know? Why, why would why would a flower in the Perry's garden have anything to do with Mrs Bly than Mrs Lancaster so Mrs Lancaster is living in the front section of the pink house and there is a secret passageway from the front section through to the back section that is upstairs What is happening? Mrs. Lancaster's name is Julia. So now Julia Lancaster is locking Tuppence in and is saying, you mustn't be frightened, my dear. It's all quite, quite natural, quite harmless. There's no pain of any kind. It'll be just like going to sleep, nothing worse. So is she the murderer? Because she wasn't even there when... What's her name died? Can't remember her name now. Moore, was it? Elizabeth Moore? Moody. Elizabeth Moody. But she, she, Mrs Lancaster had already left at that point, so she must have an accomplice of some kind. And she says that Nellie Bly isn't involved. <clears throat> Seems to be suggesting that she's the one that killed all the children. So, Mrs Lancaster, Julia, Water Lily, is a warrender. So that explains the house thing. And Philip knew that she was alive. He faked faked her leaving the country and dying. Mrs Lancaster is dead. Okay, I finished. So, it was Julie Lancaster the whole time. And I feel like I couldn't have got that. Because the only clue that it was her was a picture of her as a dancer dressed in a water lily costume but we didn't even see that earlier we only just saw it now at the time of the reveal and yeah okay maybe some of the villagers mentioned that there was a, a dancer that used to live in the house but they called her what did they call her
Miss Marchmont or Miss Marchgrave or something like that, which is not similar at all. So, yeah, I don't feel like I could have figured that out because the way that Tuppence figured it out was by using her own intuition that she didn't tell us, the reader, about. So I don't feel bad for having not guessed it because I feel like I, I guessed the bits that I could but I couldn't actually have figured it out. So anyway, I have read it. I did not figure it out, but I figured out quite a lot. And I don't think I could have got all of the way there with just what was in the book. So I'm gonna call that a win. And I will look forward to speaking to mum about why this is her favorite. Uh, it's very late now, it's just gone midnight, so I, I'm not going to end this vlog now, I'll end it tomorrow, um, and I will write a note to stick in here. Yeah, I'm not so coherent just now, so I'll see you in the morning. Okay, and it is several days later now, in fact, I decided to go ahead and film this outro after editing the footage so that I would fully remember everything that I said because there was just a lot going on <laughs> at the end of that book in particular and I stand by, sorry the camera's a bit wobbly because I'm holding it, I stand by what I said about not being capable of solving the mystery because not all of the information was available to be able to do that so that's a bit of a shame I think but overall I was surprised by the story because it wasn't at all what I expected it to be and it wasn't at all like any other kind of Agatha Christie book that I've read before. I think that it's a Tommy and Tuppence series book but it's like at the end of that series so this is like when they're quote unquote retired so for anybody who read the original stories when they were spies or intelligence agents or whatever it was, I didn't really ever get my head around that, but for anyone who read those books I think that this would be a really nice return to the characters and see where they are now and they're still up to their same old antics, I'm guessing, but having not read those books I couldn't possibly say. So it's not going to be a favourite for me, but I did really enjoy the experience of reading this and I particularly enjoyed the experience of editing this vlog actually which doesn't happen super often because editing vlogs can be a little bit of a chore and I actually really enjoyed this one even though it did take me ages so hopefully you have also enjoyed watching me experience particularly the end of this story. Happy birthday mum once again, I hope you enjoyed this video too and that's it for this one. Thank you so so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more like this from me then do think about hitting that subscribe button and I hope to see you here again soon. Thanks, bye!